SpaceX is the kind of company that always has multiple missions running at the same time, and somehow they managed to do an incredible job on nearly all of them. Just recently, they launched Flight 8 of the Starship rocket, a major step in their development program. But instead of taking a break, they immediately shifted their focus to another critical task, rescuing the stranded astronauts of Boeing's Starliner. Using their highly advanced Dragon capsule, they successfully brought the astronauts back to Earth, proving once again why they are the most reliable player in human spaceflight. You'd think after pulling off such a high-stakes mission, they'd take some time to reset before jumping into another major launch. But that's not how SpaceX operates. They are already gearing up for the next Starship flight, and it's happening sooner than you might think. We'll cover everything you need to know about Flight 9, including its expected launch date, preparations, and what to watch for. But before we dive into the details, make sure to subscribe to our channel for the latest updates on Starship and SpaceX's other groundbreaking achievements. Let's get started. It has been two weeks since Flight 8 ended with an explosion, and SpaceX is already working on Flight 9. They are moving fast, just like they have been doing with every Starship test. If we look at the time between previous Starship launches, we can see that the gaps are getting smaller. After Flight 1 launched on April 20, 2023, it took almost seven months for Flight 2 to launch on November 18, 2023. The time between Flight 2 and Flight 3 was shorter, just under three months, with Flight 3 launching on March 14, 2024. Then, Flight 4 happened on June 6, 2024, reducing the gap to less than three months. By the time Flight 5 launched on October 18, 2024, SpaceX had started moving even faster. The biggest improvement came between Flight 5 and Flight 6, which were launched just five weeks apart. This was the first time SpaceX showed that Starship launches could happen in a short time frame. Flight 7 followed quickly on December 14, 2024, meaning for the first time Starship had two launches in the same month. Flight 8 launched on March 6, 2025, which was 82 days after Flight 7, the fastest turnaround yet between two Starship flights. Now, if Flight 9 launches on April 7, the time between launches will be just 32 days, which would be a new record for Starship. This shows that SpaceX is getting faster at preparing Starship for flight. If this trend continues, we could soon see Starship launching every month, just like Falcon 9 does. Recently, a new FCC license appeared, listing April 7, 2025 as the operational start date and October 7, 2025 as the end date. The six-month range is normal for these types of licenses, but the important part is the early April start date. FCC licenses are not always exact, but they are usually close to the real launch date. For example, the FCC license for Flight 8 listed February 24th, while SpaceX originally targeted February 26th, just two days apart. The launch ended up happening on March 6th, which was only 10 days after the FCC's predicted date. If Flight 9 follows the same pattern, it could happen very close to April 7th. There is a small chance that SpaceX could be ready even earlier, around April 4th. But since we are already in the second half of March, early April might be a bit too soon. The exact launch date will depend on how fast the launch pad is prepared and when the FAA gives its approval. On the hardware side, both Ship 35 and Booster 16 have finished cryogenic proof testing, which means their fuel tanks have been tested for strength and leaks. But there are still a few more steps before they are ready to fly. Ship 35 was moved back to Mega Bay 2, where engineers are now installing its engines and other critical systems. Once that is done, SpaceX will test it at Massey's test site, where it will fire its engines while remaining on the ground. After that, it will go back to the production site for final inspections, payload installation, and flight termination system checks before being moved to the launch site. Booster 16 is still at Massey's, where it has been for a while. This suggests SpaceX is taking extra time to inspect and improve it, likely to avoid issues from previous flights. Before it can move to the launch pad, its engines need to be installed followed by a series of static fire tests to make sure everything is working correctly. 
Unlike Ship 35, Booster 16 has to wait for the launch pad to be ready before it can go through its final tests. The good news is that Flight 8 did not cause much damage to the launch pad, so repairs should be completed quickly. Another major factor is FAA approval. After Flight 8, the FAA started a mishap investigation to figure out exactly what went wrong. SpaceX needs to identify the causes of any failures, make fixes, and submit a report before getting permission for Flight 9. This process can take time, but based on recent history, it may not cause much of a delay. The FAA approved Flight 8 just 35 days after Flight 7, even though the previous investigation was still open. If they follow the same schedule, Flight 9 could get approval in early April. The most important point is that Flight 8 had many of the same problems as Flight 7, so SpaceX already knows what went wrong and how to fix it. Instead of spending time investigating, they can go straight to making improvements. In Flight 7, Ship 27 broke apart during re-entry because its heat shield failed. Starship's heat shield is made of thousands of small tiles that protect it from extreme heat, but some of them fell off or broke, exposing the ship to hot plasma. This caused the structure to overheat and disintegrate. Another issue was with the flaps, which control the ship's angle as it falls. If the flaps don't work correctly, the ship can enter the atmosphere at the wrong angle, putting too much stress on it. The booster in Flight 7 also had problems. Hot staging, where the second stage ignites while still attached to the booster, worked, but the booster was damaged in the process. The likely cause was the heat and force from the upper stage engines, which damaged the booster's systems. Flight 8 had similar issues. Ship 28 also broke apart during re-entry because of heat shield problems. Even though SpaceX improved how the tiles were attached, some still came loose, leading to failure. There was also a suspected problem with one of the flaps, which may have caused the ship to enter at the wrong angle and take too much stress. The booster in Flight 8 performed better, but still had engine issues. Some Raptor engines shut down early, and the booster's steering system didn't work perfectly, making the flight less stable. There was also a delay in hot staging, which may have put extra strain on the booster. Since these problems are already known, SpaceX is making direct improvements. They are securing the heat shield tiles better so they don't fall off during launch or re-entry. They are also reinforcing areas that take the most heat, especially around the flaps. To fix the flap issue, SpaceX is upgrading the motors and control systems so they stay in the correct position. They are also doing more ground testing to make sure the flaps work properly in extreme conditions. At this point, everything is moving in the right direction. And if all goes well, Flight 9 will launch in early to mid-April. That's it for today. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.